Oh, or down here, this, this gentleman here, maybe one more and then one more and then we'll go. For university students who have embraced the Austrian theory of economics and have a desire to change the direction of this nation at the state level as well as the national level, what advice would you give to us for internships or upon graduation? What should we be doing? What should we be looking for and trying to accomplish? You know, if you look at um, Professor Joseph Salerno's um, paper on exactly that topic, and if you will write me at uh, rockwell at mises.org, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll send it to you. Um, in fact, anybody who wants to write me about anything I've talked about tonight, if you want citations or whatever, just drop me a note, and I'm very glad to answer you. Could you spell that, rockwell at mises.org? Yes, rockwell, R-O-C-K-W-E-L-L, at Mises, and that's M-I-S-E-S -S dot O-R-G. Um, just uh, drop me a note, and we'll get you the, if we know the answers, we'll get you the answer. You? I, I'd oh. like to thank you for coming here. And my question okay. uh, is one related to uh, just briefly moral philosophy and libertarian philosophy. And it's a question that's been uh, weighing on my mind. And that's, would you agree, first off, that only the individual can be held accountable for his actions? Yes. And so then um, I was just following orders as not a legitimate excuse. And does that work in the opposite way that the, the man or woman issuing the orders is not responsible for them being carried out? No, I would say that if you've got people who are enslaved to you, as people in the military are enslaved. They're not allowed to go. If they decide they want to change their job, they can be shot. Only the state, right, would uh, think that if you want to change your job or if people want to change their jobs en masse, which is even better, uh, which they call a mutiny, but I just call <laughs> changing your jobs en masse or seeking to, they think, of course, claim the right to shoot you. So if they claim the right to shoot you, if you, you know, and you, so you're giving this order, go you've got to do this or I'm going to kill you, I would say you, you are responsible, not just the person who may or may not carry out the order. And, and if a person's really in danger of their death, I mean, so there are many different, many different uh, um, things to consider, but I think we all think that the generals and the colonels and so forth, and for that matter the presidents, uh, are the, uh, the mega criminals and not so much the poor... Uh, uh, you know, kid who was a bag boy at Kroger and now he's got a rifle in Afghanistan, um, that he's not at least the key, the key person to be concerned with. So then the slave is not responsible for his actions? Well, no, a slave, well, of course, there's a religious question, too. We're in, internally, of course, we're responsible for ourselves, even if we're a slave. Um, but I, I would say maybe we ought to work on not having slavery. Um, but the, I would say these are very difficult questions depends on the person's internal state of affairs and what they, you know, what they, um, if you're being threatened with death, there are, there are circumstances under which you morally must go to your death rather than do certain things. But um, I would say those are very limited in, in, uh, in number. Um, so this is a theological question rather than, a, you know, an economic or a libertarian question. Um, this is one of the reasons we don't want organizations like states that in effect enslave all of us. I mean, we're all, in a sense, partial slaves to the federal government. Uh, not a good thing. So are we responsible, f you know, I mean, uh, are, are the people who pay taxes to the U.S. government responsible for the actions of the U.S. government? No, I, I don't think so. On the other hand, right, I mean, there, so these are interesting, interesting issues that I can't answer at this moment. You, you had one more? Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm actually a veteran of the Iraq War myself. I actually just got back in July. Um, kind of piggybacking on the last couple of comments here and by the gentleman earlier as well. Um, <clears throat> I, would, I would actually just like to say that there's actually a significant movement in the military against the, wa the wars that are going on, the occupations, uh, the military industrial complex. I had a, a group of friends um, who were actually kind of ironic as this is, kind of a splinter cell while we were actually deployed, um, you know, trying to spread the message of freedom. I know that sounds ir ironic, it is. No, it's um, great. Um, so there's actually significant movement within the military, you know, opposed to what's going on. I just like everyone to know that. Don't just think it's always complicit, although we, we do our part in the crime. Um, that's not my, it had nothing to do with my question. That's just an aside. Um, what do you think the average person, 
maybe students in this room specifically can do to help kind of repel the invasion of like this long-term invasion of Keynesianism and socialism into government and especially into universities? Well, I think I, you know, I, I think back to Albert J. Nock being asked, in a sense, what could he do to save the world? And he said all he could do to save the world was present it with one improved unit. Well, I don't take quite that n narrow position, but I think basically it's correct. I mean, you have to educate yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to first of all read, 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 read. That's, you know, you have to make yourself knowledgeable in all these things. And once you, once you are knowledgeable, people will come to you. People will come to you for your advice, but there's no point in preaching if you don't, you know, if you don't know something. So the first thing is just you gotta read, and it's difficult. Right? I mean, there's a lot of very difficult books to read, and you've got the books you're reading in your university courses too. But that's that. I would say that's the only thing you that's that's the only thing you can be sure of having an effect in. Other things maybe you'll have an effect, maybe you won't. But in terms of changing yourself, educating yourself, you know you can have the the right effect. So that's um, uh, and I'll just mention that the reason that the Vietnam War ended, in my view is because of the mutinies taking place among the troops. There were mutinies in Vietnam. They were sit-down strikes. They were sold. There was the, the uh, so-called fragging, where um, officers were being killed by their troops. Uh, officers were ordering them to you know, go out in the jungle, and they said, and what, what, they'd roll a fragmentation grenade into the, into the second lieutenant's tent. I mean, that was the way they, that was why it became called fragging. But the, the, uh, the um, U.S. state's life passed before its eyes in Vietnam because of the reaction of the troops. Makes, them, makes governments very nervous when the troops are not taking their orders. So um, I think this is why we're starting to see conservatives like George Will talk about, well, maybe we should get out of Afghanistan, maybe we shouldn't be in Iraq. They're afraid of the reaction in the military. And I think you're right. I think there's a, a lot of dissent. Um, I highly recommend a documentary called Winter Soldier made about uh, the Vietnam War and there are many great things in this movie but there's a scene where there's a soldier who's being, um, it was a, uh, in fact a doctor, um, Green Beret doctor who had refu was ref refused to take orders, uh, refused to go out and uh, help in the fighting and so he's being court-martialed and as they bring him in there are thousands of kids all around the, uh, the uh, set up in the courtroom and they're all going, they're all giving him the peace sign. Okay, that kind of thing chills their bones in Washington and the Congress and the White House and these places. So may your tribe increase. And uh, so I think this is again, it is absolutely true there's dissent in the military, <coughs> increasing dissent. When you hear them talk about, oh, the army is broken, you hear that phrase. Who, who is it broken for? Right? Broken, not as useful a tool for the state anymore. So, good signs. I would say there are good signs. Um, this is again why they're wanting to cut back. Also, they'd like to murder everybody in Iran. I mean, that's the other side of wanting to get out of Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, but as Ron Paul said when he was asked, what has Barack Obama done that was good? He said, he hasn't bombed Iran. <laughs> so, he hasn't bombed Iran. <laughs> Socialized medicine, of course, that's another story. Bumper, thank you. Thank you, everybody.